Hello and welcome back to our continuing adventures on the Let's Defend platform. We are continuing our path down old school in the security analyst path. Uh, we are closing out the last exercise, at least last is at the time of recording. Uh, SOC 164, suspicious MSHTA behavior. Event ID is 114. Type is another lol bin. Uh, March 5th, 2022, 10.29 a.m. So it looks like we have the system Roberto kicking off mshta.exe out of the system32 directory of Windows, which is correct. And it looks like it's calling a ps1.hta file that's on the desktop. Uh, let's see, we got the nb5. EDR action, of course, is allowed because heaven forbid it actually stops something. <laughs> uh, and then trigger alert reason low reputation HTA file executed via mshta.exe. All right, so if you've watched the previous video, uh, one, SOC 163, event ID 113, this is another lol bin, so something that's included inside of Windows by default that allows you to sit there and perform other actions besides that which would, or what the application was actually designed for. So it looks like somebody made an HTA file, which is what HTML application file, and they're running it locally via the mshta.exe executable that is in C Windows System32. In this particular case, yes. And so basically, execution, basically how it's laid out. So opens the target.hta and executes the embedded JavaScript, JScript, or VBA script, or VB script, excuse me. And it looks like you can go through and actually pull, get object. So it can basically go out, grab a script based somewhere, and then execute it as if it was locally there. And stuff that screws with the alternative data streams in the NTFS. Ah, oh, drives. Fun, fun. <laughs> uh, as always, I will include a link to this in the notes section of the video description. It's always a good thing. Um, if you haven't by now, I would highly suggest just kind of backing all the way out and just taking a look and just kind of playing around. Uh, in terms of off this site in regards to um, looking at all the low bins that are available generally by default. So we're going to jump back in to the platform. We're going to look at exchange just to see as to whether or not anything's come in for the 5th. And again, it looks like the only thing we're looking at last email, October 29th, 2021. So several, several months back from the point of uh, this exercise. So email is absolutely no help, but that's okay. We have a MD5 of the ps1.hta file that was on Roberto's desktop. So we can dump that into virus total, do a refresh, and we've got a 22 out of 57 score in terms of engines detecting. And we're gonna look for the big players. So, Bitdefender, ESET, Kaspersky, Microsoft. Yes, I am going directly over McAfee. <laughs> oh, and then Trillix, FireEye. Although I thought Trillix was the new name for the... Is, is the Enterprise version of McAfee? Yeah. Since they were all brought together. I'm right, just taking a look at the other community posts here to see as to what kind of just shakes out from all this stuff. Hmm. Well, it's definitely sus as I'll get out. Malformed, replace, commandlets for each object, set content, start sleep. 
Hmm. I think we got enough of the metaphorical big players on this to be like, yeah, this is bad. So I guess let's look at the logs. This is put together. So 1029. We have our system in question, reaching out to this 193, 142, 5823 on port 80. Apparently it's trying to grab a server.txt. I bet you that text is additional code. And then it looks like we hit the reply back over port 80, back to our system, and we get a 404 not found. Okay, so... We have something that's established an initial beachhead, but does not seem to be able to move on to subsequent stages. So if we take that IP address and we dump it into URL Hoss, take a look at previous things that have come up here. We don't have an exact hit for server.txt, but we have a couple of executables. Looks like a misspelled Groupon and a misspelled texture.exe. And it looks like that's nanocore rat and remcos rat. So this IP address has been seen in previous other uh, malware campaigns. So if we take the full thing that it's trying to reach out to, we see that that detection is picked up by 12 out of 93 different. So it kind of repeats from the uh, hash of that ps1.hta file. So again, we have Bitdefender. We got ESET. I don't remember Sophos being showing up as anything there, and even Google Safe Browsing. Of course, that's a month ago, so if we go ahead and just refresh that, let's see if it gets better or worse than 12 out of 97. Thirteen out of ninety three, better. Web root this time. But it's four oh four. But if we take a look, the body is this hash here, the SHA two fifty six. We stick that in the virus total, we don't have a match. So apparently this was not grabbed and dumped into anything. If we take that IP address and we dump it in, Talos Gives us poor email rep, no giant surprise there, but we don't have location details. And apparently at some point it must have been on a block list of theirs as it's expired out. But thankfully we can go down and since it shows the IP addresses, dot twenty three is on the pbl.spamhouse.org blacklist. If we take a look at OTX, so this reports a Romanian, no tags, but again we see the same sort of aspect in terms of server.txt. We're seeing a couple more like invoice underscore numbers underscore customer dot zip dot exe. Basically all comes back as generic malware. And then we got a hash from February. Is that something that's inside of B oops BT? Oops. <laughs> uh so what it's known for is what basically started us off on this whole rigmarole, the PS one dot HTA. Uh let's see. So let's see, Romanian, okay, so IBM agrees Romanian. The location, okay, registrant is Romania, but location is Germany, supposedly. With no other real detection shoved in there, so. So I guess we're moving on then from log management. So at some particular point, for some reason, it runs the script. It apparently tries to reach out to that IP address to grab server.txt, but it receives back a 404, which... No, oh, I closed it from a previous exercise in regards to HTTP codes. 404 is, of course, object not found.
So whatever you're looking for, you're not going to find it here. So we go over to Roberto. And what were you searching for, Roberto? This is 1953, so this is 753, their time. This is not lining up. And 20, uh, no, it's 1400, so it would be 2 p.m. Their time, again, past the point, because we're looking at roughly um, 1030. So let's look at command history. Hello. This started before. So, we've, okay, we've got a very expanded timeline then. So it's not 1029 to 1030. This looks like 811 to 1030. At least as it sits right now. So we've got an expansion. So they're doing CD. They're doing directory, tree. So they're looking at the contents of the folder. They're going back. Doing another dir. Then they're going to users. Then they're going to Robert. I would have figured it would have been Roberto. Primary user, Roberto. It might just be a uh, um, a mess up. I just realized I did not jot down the other items I were going to was going to bring up for quality assurance. Crap! <laughs> I'll just go back. These are all stacking one on top of the other in my notes. So, okay, so it should be Roberto as opposed to R Robert. Then they go to desktop, which is exactly what we ended up seeing for the alert. They go dir, they go dir. Then they're calling the ps1.hta. So it looks like it does PowerShell. New object. Web client, and then it goes through and tries to grab the again that one nine three one four two fifty eight twenty three server dot text, and to go through and execute. But because it's not there, we don't get any further, which is good. So we can still consider the system compromised. Either Roberto is doing bad things, or someone else is on the box as him. Network connections. We've got again the 1953, which is 753, which I think we previously looked at the web traffic. And again, that the 1400 or 2 p.m. So it's just all just basically tied to the web traffic. That's fine. So we've got another instance where we have a bunch of commands being fired off on a box. No real indication um, of what the actual initial process for all this stuff is. I mean, obviously here we have the whole aspect of MSHTA kicking off the PS1.HTA on the desktop of Roberto. But what was before that? It looks like all we have, or looks like all we would have is just a command window open where they're just kind of doing CD and all the rest of that stuff through here, tree and the like before they finally go off act or kick off that HTA file. And then we get the point where PowerShell goes, tries to grab the server.txt, but it fails because it's not there. What do we got on the process list? So Sysmon, uh, that'd be good if this ends up making it into the level two or incident responder aspect. This would be another one that would be kind of interesting to try to, try to dig upwards using Sysmon to see as to what happened before this? Around 8 o'clock that day. Do we have some other process kick off? Or do we have maybe some sort of indication of another connection like RDP or something? I guess we'll find out if uh, we could see the other side of this as an L2 underneath the incident responder path. But it's typical, our big takeaways are, so we have mshta.exe kicking off. It's all legit. It's firing off the uh, ps1.hta, the explorer.exe, so... Wouldn't that just be 
I would figure that would be something that would have been opened up in a cmd.exe and then kicked off, but this says that it would have been Explorer, so they just double click the HTA file on the desktop. But our command history kind of indicates different. But and of course we have our command. Oh, never mind. So at least there was something there for the rest of those, the CDs, the trees, everything else like that. And of course, then we get the PowerShell aspect, which then kicks off all the rest of the stuff that we looked at. The uh, new object, web client, and then reaching out to the address that we've already previously covered. And of course, the parent process being mshta.exe. So I think we have a fairly good idea as the timeline of events. So either Roberto is a double agent or somebody managed to compromise the box. We don't have signs of anything else kicking off in terms of process. So is this some sort of remote connection or somebody actually literally did Roberto get up and walk away and somebody sat down in front of his box before, you know, did he forget to lock it? Definitely be something to sit there and try to escalate up. I mean, we didn't get the second stage, but we still had the first stage kickoff. Somebody still tried to kick off this PS1.hta on Roberto's desktop. So we still have some cleanup and remediation to do, along with trying to sit there and gather whatever their evidence we can. But that's kind of outside the scope of what we're doing. And of course, yet again, semantic endpoint protection just sitting there, thumb up its butt. <laughs> Oh, I think I've earned the right to sit there and smack talk semantic. A couple of jobs that I've had um, effectively has been used. And I don't really have a whole hell of a lot of good things to say in regards to it. I mean, I, I'm kind of almost of the opinion that I almost would prefer Windows Defender which I'm surprised they're not bursting into flames in regards to saying that on an enterprise environment, but I don't know. It is what it is. All right, I got to add the command.exe into my notes. And I don't think we have anything else. We, I mean, we've got process history, but that's, that's the process list. I'm going to say we're just going to proactively do containment because we've still got code being run on here that we don't really have a firm grasp as to... You know, do we need to slap? Do we got to get the uh, black helicopter, you know, black tactical gear, and the, uh, you know, black bag team activated to go grab Roberto or what? Someone's going to disappear. But let's grab ownership and let's start working our way through this. And we will see what we will see. All right, let's run through the case. Create the case. Okay, what do we got? Another explanation of living off the land binaries or low bins. We identified the lol bin, in this case the mshda.exe in C Windows System 32. Suspicious activity. Uh, yeah, it executed a weird HTA file on Roberto's desktop. It is very suspicious. Uh, the suspicious activity is execution. Because if we remember going back to everything, the process list, all it's doing is executing the PS1.hta. It is the actual PowerShell portion that's going through and trying to do download. Who performed the activity? Well. In terms of execution, it looks like it would be the user or somebody masquerading as the user. 
Yeah, there's fingers on the keyboard, be them virtual fingers or human fingers. Or I suppose I guess it could be a time traveling Terminator. <laughs> oh, cripe. Yes, I know, bad jokes, bad jokes. So we got a couple of different things. We're going to have a MD5 of the HTA file. We are going to end up with a URL. Stage two. Um, and we have the MD5 already of our PS1.hta. And then the last item is effectively just the IP address. And stage two, question mark, because it was 404. Do we have anything else? No, doesn't look like it. Okay. Uh, analyst note. Um, Execute HTA file on the desktop, which attempted to use PowerShell to download a second stage, but the URL was 404. Right? Yeah, because we don't really see any sort of recon or anything else like that, because all they did was cd directory tree cd dot dot directory cd users cd robert, which should be Roberto, cd desktop directory directory, and then basically the kicking off of the PS1, that HTA, and then the PowerShell being called to go through and grab from the IP address, the server dot text, which leads to the 404. Actually, can we go back one? I want to make sure I got all of this. All right, hopefully I got that. I mean, I only did select all and then copy about six or seven times. So I'm going to be rather upset if it didn't take. <laughs> oh, I miss doing this. I mean, this is kind of sort of just like my actual, like, quote unquote nine to five. But I see stuff that basically you gotta sit there and there's a lot more, you know, thinking and I'm not saying that these are like super easy. There's still a process you need to follow. There's still some interpretation, everything else like that. But it's just you know, this is a lot more streamlined as opposed to like what I have to do in terms of trying to dig up a whole bunch of information on an end user that's tripping this, you know, looking up, um, okay, well, like, what's the user's job title? Um, are they using their admin account or their standard user account? So on and so forth. Well, apparently this is another wide success. All green. <laughs> Oh, if you can't have fun, then why do you do it? All right, so let's go through and take a look at the official write-up and compare it to the copious notes that I took. So MSHTA originates from a low reputation HTA file extension, detailed examination. So it looks like they took the MD5 that they were given and they dumped it into VirusTotal at the time they did it, which looks like 
at least at the time, somewhere around late January of 2022, where they only had 19 out of 60. Whereas apparently, you know, like almost, what, a month and a half later? So it's only gone up to 22 out of 57. So they've got all that. VB script, I, HTA, okay, I did not, wait, or did I? No, you didn't use the, you used URL hoss. Oops. Know, URL or abuse.ch has got so many other things to sit there and play with. Oh, you can actually download the sample. Wow. Hmm, Bitcoin address, huh? Web download. Okay, well, I didn't go that far in terms of pulling that stuff up. Oh, so they went through and actually dumped it through. They got the same aspect in terms of the PS1.HTA trying to call PowerShell to go out and grab. Okay, so they took a couple more steps than what I did. I suppose technically if I really wanted to go back into the just security analyst mindset as opposed to like a level 2 or 3, then I probably would have gone through and done that, but I didn't even need to look at the, I mean, just seeing the PowerShell code enough was enough. Okay, damn it, yeah, okay. Got the IP, got the URL, got the ND5. Didn't really have a, a file name section since it's what, email address, email domain, URL address, IP address, MD5 are the sections we can put in there. So lessons learned. Legitimate binaries within Windows can be exploited for malicious purposes. Yeah, well, welcome to Windows. <laughs> Thus, having signature protected secure files does not mean that they cannot be used for dangerous purposes. What's important is the file's behavior and not the file itself. Yeah? From time to time, the command and control servers may not be active, but nonetheless, isolation processes should still take place in terms of quarantining the boxes. Again, wholeheartedly agree. So what, from that malware bazaar then, can we actually just be able to grab the stupid thing? I don't know if I really want to go that far. I mean, we covered most of our bases. I guess I did probably take a leap in logic just from seeing what's generally considered normal as opposed to anything else. So I guess if you're unsure, sandbox the crap out of it. But I unfortunately cannot sit there and spin off a separate process of myself that, you know, completely negates the last several years of crap I've seen, so. But, I guess technically I'd be maybe almost overqualified running through the security analyst portion, but, I don't know, you don't necessarily, just as I've just shown, you don't need to run the stuff through sandboxing if you've known enough of the, what's kind of considered normal, to an extent. I mean, if you really want to sit there and dot the uh, I's and cross the T's, yeah, sandboxing through your platform of choice would have been a uh, 
well, pulling the sample from the malware bazaar, sandboxing it, or looking to see if it had been done previously, which of course would have found because it looks like they did in any dot run. So it's all good. So that has been apparently a fully successful run through of SOC 164. Suspicious MSHTA behavior. Vent ID 114, type Lobin, for March 5th, 2022, 10.29 a.m. And with all that being said, I will see everyone in the next video.